And welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Malphite Renekton. That's how we're going to be trying out new Malphite. It has been buffed up just a little bit. It used to be where you need to summon 12 plus mana of landmarks to be able to get your leveled up Malphite. Now you only need 10. And that's important because getting a leveled up Malphite is really, really powerful. You get that round start, unstoppable force, a two mana slow spell that can stun all enemies very powerful spell and what we're going to be doing is playing that in a more aggressive list with Renekton and um, a lot of aggressive elements we're going to have um, some vulnerable stuff to help out Renekton we're going to have like rock hopper unraveled earth um, these are that create these rolling sands be able to give some enemies vulnerable so that Renekton is going to be able to challenge them and get plus two plus one Besides Renekton attacking for a lot of Overwhelm, we'll also have like Earth Elemental as well as Ruin Runner. And these Overwhelm attackers work great with stun, with like Ground Slam. Because, right, like you can attack with like a 6 5 Earth Elemental, they block with a 5 5, and then you Ground Slam it, and now your 6 damage Overwhelm is going all to the Nexus. So we're gonna be, yeah, we're gonna be pretty aggressive, and then we'll finish it up with being able to stun all their blockers with this unstoppable force. So it looks like a pretty, pretty interesting list here. Even Chip, one mana three three. That's, you know, that's really nice. Then Shape Stone's a wonderful pump spell, plus three plus one. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of good stuff going on here. And then, you know, obviously Merciless Hunter is like, you know, maybe the best card in the deck besides the champions. Amazing card. So, let's get to it. Let's play some Malphite Renekton. All right, we're back to Aurelia Azir. This is going to be our second time playing it after some nerfs. Okay, so we got a pretty decent hand. This is not a very good Unraveled Earth matchup because they can get like the little, like the blade dances and all that kind of stuff and the sand soldiers. So not a very good matchup for that. Um, but Preservarium's always good. Even though we don't love, I don't love using Preservarium early, but because you know, a lot of times we want to um, be able to play to the board early. Should be okay. Love having Merciless Hunter on round three, and I like Merciless Hunter with Shapestone. I'm hoping they play Azir this round. I'm gonna be passing. Every blade, every beat in its place. We love it when they Not run. Azir. We'll get our legs then. But it's still worth challenging. It's just is it worth the shape stone? If I play the shape stone, I keep a 4-1. Fearsome in play. Hunt down. I'm not sure. So of course, we could find, you know, we could have found like a Renekton. Out of four. I don't know how I'm how I'm beating the Screen Glade duo, to be honest. I'm kinda I kinda did that proactively. I don't know how. You know, so I want my Desert nat Naturalist to blow up that thing. But, you know, worried about, I was worried about his ear. I 
keeps them from going wide. It's not worth it. I don't know how I'd be this Green Glade duo right now. If we don't have like quicksand. So we can't. Yeah, that that specific matchup did look pretty rough because of how. Really, the thing is, is like they so easily um, dodge all of our roiling sands and just don't care about them, and that looked um, like a problem, for sure. They got some dragons. Prepare for battle. You cannot hide forever. So I could play Blue Sentinel, but I decided to keep the Ruthless Predator. Available instead. Alright, so you gotta assume that they have sharp sight. And so, therefore, we'll just do some trading. And, you know, we'll have backup Ruthless Predator. Or sorry, you know, back back up Renekton. Way to leveling up Renekton. Malphite, yes. We're at eight out of ten for Malphite. This will give us 10 out of 10 with the Blue Sentinel dying. This is my first time playing this deck, which asks, is this deck good? It's my first time playing it. Um, so far, it's felt just fine. We lost our first match to Aurelia Azir. That had a good hand. That's that's going to happen. Green Glade duo got us. I mean, I could, I could threaten attacking for 16, right? Yeah, because that's 10, 16. Or I just attack like this and keep Hush Mana available. I think I want to do that. I think I want to kill this Screeching Dragon.
That's a card to be scared of. Clips Dragon's a card to be scared of. I just really hope they don't have Concerted Strike to kill Malphite. Just pass. Or play another blocker. Yeah. They've had a very good hand. You know, they had the, the one drop. You know, they went one, two... Yeah, they, they went 1-2 into Shivana, into um, Screeching Dragon, into Screeching Dragon, you know, and then obviously the Eclipse, they got multiple things. Yeah, it's just a very good hand that they, that they had. I guess I regret hushing and not keeping my other Earth Elemental alive. It would have been challenged here. And I would have had a 3-3. Three, three. Clips Dragon's pretty good. They created both these cards. Those are a couple of good cards to create. It's all hindsight, but hindsight, I wish I would have just done the, the two mana stun everything and then, you know, and try to attack with Malphite and stuff instead of having Malphite challenge the Screeching Dragon. I, I regret that quite a bit. Here I'm hoping to draw another Malphite. At least I was hoping to draw another Malphite. Amazing hand opponent. GG's. Okay, so we'll see if we can be fast enough. Use our vulnerable cards. Chip's just going to be a 1-1 right now. But we're we're going to keep it. I don't think I played the that last game. I, I just don't think, you know, like how I se sequence and everything. It's it's hindsight, of course, but I just don't think I sequence it well enough. I think that we had the tools to be in a better position than what we were at the end of the game. see passing there and having them waste their mana and not be able to develop but it's difficult whenever you're attacking for nine right it's difficult to just pass attacking for nine but they go catalyst of aeons heal it back okay just withering well all right i'll do that that's a good attack catalyst would have been a little bit worse for me Challenge here, or attacking put him down to negative two, or attacking here to negative one. This way would threaten killing the trundle as well. Um, so I guess I'm going this way. Yeah, I, lo I love the labs. Yeah, I love the labs quite a bit. And we're um, we're gonna be doing the the fizz lab to legendary right after this. We're gonna be taking you know I haven't I haven't checked out all the new things in the latest lab. Let me checking that out. I think we got to do this. 
That's gonna be a lot of fun. So we're gonna take. We're gonna start at normal with Fizz and take it all the way to legendary. Was that their plan? Just frostbite? Uh, get another fr another frostbite. Okay, so we got the trundle out of here. Good draw, good draw. They might have been planning on Ruination, or like maybe they just wanted to Frostbite, save more spell mana and Ruination right here. We love it when they run. That's pretty nice. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Three mana removal spell for my 4-3. Oh, right, I guess I could have cast this. I was kind of keeping up with the mana for right negation. That's why I didn't. But I suppose I could have. Because it does draw a card. Stands beneath me and wins behind me. All right, that'll do. Okay, got a win. GG's. All right, so it's a fizz. I gotta bring it in. I love Ruin Runner. I, I kind of wanted to keep it, but you know, it's a. <laughs> it's a five mana card against Twisted Fizz that, you know, can kill us pretty quickly. We gotta look for cheaper stuff. Alright, Ground Slam, pretty cool. I mean, if I pass the round, I'm only getting five damage in. If I pass the round, they do nothing. Get rewarded. We get the fat five damage in, and they pass the round. Definitely rewarded. Man, that's awesome. Well, that's too bad. Well, I was planning on going Desert Naturalist, blow up one of these, and get a 5 4, right? So we get a 5 4 and a 2 4, but then, or we could just get Renekton to challenge the Sprayfin. That's a tough call. Seven power against across two bodies, or six power with an Overwhelm. I'm a sucker for a good champion. I'm going to just play the champion. This could be, uh, you know, a turning point. You know, hindsight that we'll look back and, and say that I should go with the Desert Naturalist. One more damage with Naturalist. If you think, like, like the Naturalist 2 challenges the Sprayfin, and then you have a 5-4 left, so you're attacking for 5, or, you know, Renekton challenging does 4 extra. So it's like one, it's like one extra damage with that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get Malphite in play. Go with the flow. 
Could be setting up Monster Harpoon again. Maybe I need to Ground Slam. Keep them from Monster Harpooning. Ground Slam, then a Merciless Hunter. Nah, I'm just going to play this big rock. That Kindred Renekton? Okay. I like that. Kindred Renekton. So I'm thinking, I was thinking like maybe I need to attack with Renekton right away so they don't get to Mystic Shot Renekton, but if they had Mystic Shot for Renekton, they could have done that last round anyway. If they have Get Excited, they'll be able to get excited either way. I guess maybe the play was just Salt Spire, stun everything, but then I would have only attacked for 10, challenge 12. I think their get excited on the Renekton is fairly obvious. Oh, no, they took my ground slam. Well then. So no more ground slams in the deck. There's only two. They stole one with Black Market Merchant. We got the other one. I like that shape stone draw. That's gonna make everything be a lethal attacker, even little two ones like Sentinels. Alright, eight cards over there. Jagged Taskmaster deck. Taskmaster plus Sump Worker. Stun them all. We have an unstoppable force. Stay still. <laughs> Stay still. It's <laughs> a good voice line. That will do. All right, two and two. We can get our last one and get a winning record. There we go, GG's after this. All right, we lost to Aurelia Azir before. And it looked honestly like a really tough matchup because of how well they do against Roiling Sands. I could see us needing to keep Hush because of Green Glade Duo and stuff like that, but I, I think we gotta try to be more aggressive. We need to find like Renekton. Well, maybe, I like the Renekton, but maybe not all four and five mana cards. Maybe some cheaper stuff. I thought everything they did in the balance patch was good. Each change that was made was a good change. But I also I also understand that they could have made some more changes, right? Like there's there's a few things like you know, like there definitely could have been some more buffs and nerfs. Like there really could have just been more changes overall. Okay, so while like the the decks that are dominating right now are not They're not ones I hate. Like I don't hate this deck. I don't hate Thresh Nasus. 
I, I don't really like Lissandra Trundle, but anyway, there's no denying that the metagame is very stale, that it's it's solved, right? Like, there's no denying this is a solved metagame where we have, it's been a long enough time where we have found what the best decks in this game are, and it's, and that, that balance patch didn't change, didn't change that. So while I like all four of the changes they made, there certainly could have been more changes to um, maybe shake things up a little bit because with what happened, there's, you know, it's a, it's a very, very solved metagame. Once beloved soldier, no longer fit to serve. Yeah, attacking for 13 on turn 2 is kind of rough. So I think, like, Doomkeeper. Doomkeeper could be a 1-2, right? A 1-2 that makes a Sand Soldier so it can attack for 3 on round 1 makes a lot more sense than a 2-1. I think that's that's something I would change immediately. Uh, like, that that's that's one I would change. Merciless Hunter should really just be, like, a 3-3 three, three and no Fearsome. Like, the 4-3 with Fearsome, like, that card is way overtuned. That's a card that can change fairly easily. Um, like, Spectral Matron, you can change. You can make it either 7 or 9 mana. Or, um, you know, the Watcher, you can definitely change. I don't really know why the Watcher has to just be, like, a, a win-the-game-on-the-spot kind of attack. Because it's it comes from Lissandra, a 3-mana champion. It's not like you're using, like, a 10-mana champion that whenever it levels up and does something cool, then you have, like, like a um, an ability to win the game on the spot. Like, we're, we're talking about a 3-mana champion. So, like, I don't know why the Watcher has to be even designed that way. Like, the Watcher just being an 11-11 Overwhelm makes a lot more sense to me from a design perspective like an 11 mana 11 11 overwhelm and then you could also like use like a you know something that reduces the cost by one to get it to be able to play it for 10 as it like how it is you know and then it could still have um you know but then get get rid of like the you know the whole attack ability i feel like that would make more sense to just because you know it's it's I feel like it's supposed to be just like a bigger thrall, right? Like how the, the thralls are like the 8-8 overwhelms and the watcher is like this, you know, real big thrall that, again, Lissandra deals with. I don't, I don't really understand why it has its ability. So yeah, each, all of the top decks could have all got more nerfs than what they did. And they could really have buffed up some, like they did buff up Talia and Malphite, but they could buff up some, some other just cards. Um, and not like a ton, but just, you know, some different cards you know, here or there, um, you know, like how, how, you know, Malphite, Talia, like they're buffing them up, you know, trying to make the landmark stuff better. Well, one thing that could really help both Talia and Malphite is if like this card was playable, right? Cause you want overwhelm with both Talia and Malphite. So just buff up, like, that's what they could do is just like buff this card, make this playable, like countdown three for this thing is ridiculous. Make it like, you know, countdown one or maybe two, and then get you know, maybe not make this slow speed, make this like focus speed and get rid of fleeting. So like, like, like there's no reason for this card to have to have fleeting after three, you know, has countdown three. And so like in three rounds, which you can't see the future, but in three rounds, you better have like the thing that you, that you need to have overwhelm on immediately for that. It's just, it's silly. Like it, <laughs> you know, like make this a playable card, you know, focus, get rid of this and make it like countdown one or two. And then that, that buffs up both Talia and Malphite a whole lot. Because then you're like, okay, sweet, Spiral Stairs is playable. You know, like, like Zenith Blade's playable, right? Like, you know, like this is a, a, a good card that's playable. It has Daybreak, draws another one. Very good playable card. Make this playable also. It doesn't have to be the best thing ever. You know, like Zenith Blade's not the best thing ever. But just make it playable. And then and then that will help out your, your landmark decks. Right? Like, you know, you could just do like some things like that. Yeah, Fleeting and Countdown 3 and Slow... Like what are we doing with this? Like what, like what, what are we even doing here? Like what's the point of printing that card? But anyway, um, so yeah, I, I liked all four changes they made, and I thought all four changes were very good. But I could definitely have seen that four changes be like twenty changes, and um, you know, cards like Spiral Stairs and and things like that. And I, I think that that probably would have been, would have been better. And I, I'm not somebody that likes to kill decks or kill strategies or anything, right? Like I don't think that like. They should have nerfed, like, you know, really Azir and Thresh Nasus and the Watcher and just nerf him to the ground. You know, like, I, I like, I want things to be playable. But I think if, if like, Lissandra made, you know, 
an 11 11 overwhelm i think it would still be playable and you could still you know you wouldn't have maybe the exact same deck but i mean i think lissandra is a good champion and we see lissandra like with our thrall deck before i think lissandra is a good champion that doesn't need to like the watcher just doesn't need to be designed like that like i I just don't think it's a very good design to have attack win the game you know it's basically win the game you know that's just not i don't know that's not a very well designed uh finishing aspect of a three mana champion you know we're not talking about a 10 mana champion that's difficult to level up it's a three mana champion so i i think that there could be some some differences in the in how they're designing some of those and just some some more changes uh that they could have made um because i understand the frustration that a lot of people have that um you know with this solved metagame that they are tired of playing it because they're tired of playing against the same decks all the time and i i can completely understand that and that's um, that's what the balance patches are supposed to do. When you have a metagame that is, has been solved for like this, like this, Thresh Nasus, even before the latest expansion has, uh, came out, you know, even before Merciless Hunter was printed, Thresh Nasus was the best deck. They went two very small, slight nerfs on it with Blighted Caretaker and Atrocity, but then they also printed this card, which never needed to be printed like this. Um, which is this is just too powerful of a card this is too high on rate and getting a keyword and having amazing playability for a three mana common this is just this is this should not pass like the cutting the cutting board right like this if this was a three three without fearsome and with this ability that would be a really really good card that'd be a great card um and so like that that deck's been like a very good deck for three months you know four months something like that that's been like at the top of the metagame and that's that's just kind of too long <laughs> you know and it, it's been too too dominant for too long and so i completely understand people being frustrated by the by this uh, uh by the balance patch updates merciless hunter shouldn't i don't know three two with fearsome just it doesn't need fearsome it really doesn't but um like okay Hired Gun is a very good quality card. Like, Hired Gun's a, a really well-printed card. Like, Hired Gun seen, has seen a ton of play. This is how, like, this this should be. So imagine, higher, like, Hired Gun, it, Merciless Hunter costs one more mana. But you get two more power. You also get Fearsome. Fearsome's a really good quality keyword when you get two more power. And then you actually get the choice of exactly what you want to give Vulnerable you know, to grant vulnerable instead of like your opponent kind of choosing, you know, like, like your opponent kind of has like some, some say over this, right? So you get, you get the choice that's much, much more powerful of an effect. That's like worth like one mana anyway, just like being able to have the choice. But then you also get like a really good keyword with fearsome. And then you also give too much, two more power. So you took a very good quality card in hired gun and just made it ridiculous. And yeah, Sand Spinner was already amazing, and you just took Sand Spinner, which is a great card, and made it even better. Really, instead of printing Merciless Hunter, as we t as I've kind of talked about, Sharima needs spells that can be removal. Right now, it's like Quicksand is it. Like I wish they would have just instead of Merciless Hunter, they would have just made like a a any kind of removal spell, <laughs> you know, like something that could help out the control decks, right? Because what. What Sharima's missing as a region is it's it's difficult to play Zillion and Buried Sun Disk decks, and it's not the fault of either Buried Sun Disk or Zillion. Like they're both like Zillion's an amazing card. Like this does not need to be buffed at all. Like that's that's a really well designed card that's really powerful for only two mana. No reason to buff Zillion. Buried Sun Disk is incredibly powerful when it works. No reason to buff this. The problem is is both Buried Sun Disk and Zillion require you to play very long games and Shurima as a region is not there's not any tools in Shurima that help you play really long games you know like you're talking about quicksand and spirit fire right like we're, we're not we're not we just don't have tools like removal spells or anything that help us play long games which is the problem with those cards and printing like merciless hunter and sand spinner like those those cards don't really like they like they're they're good aggressive things but they're not you know, it's not a zillion card. You know, it's not a buried sun disc card. It doesn't stop like fast aggro, and that's what that's what this region can't do is stop fast aggro. Yeah, because so then like the spells that they've been printing printing just aren't playable, right? Like like what is this on like this this card isn't playable whatsoever. Like what is like why print this card? Um, you need to do three damage to all the champions, right? Like there's so many champions that have three health. 
like way to judgment like why why are we what is two two damage to a champion that's just insulting right like you can't play this card um yeah so like your your only options like even even ricochet like one damage five times for six mana like if you don't have reputation even if you do have reputation this is a very poor card right like like what are all these these things that deal damage that our removal spells in this region are just very poorly designed so like we're we're left with siphoning strike and like boomerang blade <laughs> boomerang blade costs seven like you know and then spirit fire like we're not left with good options and like even this thing like what what is this like why why do we have this that's the that's the problem with Shurima as a region that's the problem like especially when you're trying to play longer games that's the problem with buried sun disc and zillion I've said just I've said this that on on his face, if you just look at the champion individually, Zillion is easily the most powerful champion in this region. Um, Zillion is incredible with how it makes like these time bombs, which are so good. And if it levels up, it gets a ridiculous amount of card advantage, and it only costs two mana, like for for the mana cost and all the power that it has. This is the best champion in the region. Now, of course, Azir and Nasus are much much more successful because they have a lot more support. And a lot better cards around them, right? Like Azir has, you know, Dune Keeper and all sorts of like really good Sand Soldier cards and everything. So it, it has a lot of stuff around it and, you know, a lot of tools around it. Zillion just doesn't have the control aspects around it in this region. Obviously, you know, NASA is like what it has with the Shadow Isles part two. So these have like, you know, like these have um, other cards that really help support these champions and really pump up these champions and really make them look good Azir and Nasus do zillion has nothing like that um and so people people clamor for buff zillion buff zillion but this card as is you, there's there's buffing zillion doesn't solve any problems because it doesn't make any the deck better like what are you going to do make this like a four four instead of a one four it doesn't it doesn't make any like the deck better at all it it needs like buffing to buff Zillion, you need to make these other removal cards playable. You need to make like Unworthy and um, these kind of cards, Right of Dominance, um, Weighted Judgment. You need to make these like actual cards that that matter that can do things. That's how you buff Zillion, and that's how you buff Buried Sun Disk. All right, but anyway, that's just a little side. So like, so I completely understand conclusion. Completely understand people being upset with the patch. They made four good decisions with the four cards they changed, but that really could have been 20 cards that they changed, and that probably, that would have, I mean, not probably, that would have definitely been better for the metagame. Anyway, that's going to be it here for Malphite Renekton. Uh, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and as always, um, feel free to leave those comments. Let me know what you think of just the deck in general, anything about the metagame, anything about like those those comments on the metagame. Hopefully y'all enjoy that little discussion. But that's going to be it here for this deck. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.